a closer look on all of this, I spoke with Mark Weisbrot. He's the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research here in Washington. And I began by asking for his thoughts on what's next after this historic election result. Well, the economic future is problematic because of the policies that they've been implementing for several years now and because of the structure of the Eurozone and the pressure that comes from the European authorities who are not elected in this election at all. And they are pushing, of course, uh, Spain to continue with the austerity and with the... You're talking about the IMF in particular. Well, well the IMF is the, actually the junior partner in the, in the apparatus. It's the European Central Bank, the European Commission, the Eurogroup of Finance Ministers, and then I would put the IMF at, okay. the, at the bottom. But yeah, they're important too. But the, but the idea that there's a lot of forces pushing Spain back towards austerity when in fact it looks like the voters want to go in the other direction. Absolutely, and they have good reason to. I mean, the European authorities are not giving them any kind of a future. The IMF says that even when you get to uh, full potential GDP, which means basically as good as you're going to get for employment, you're still going to have 16.5% unemployment. Mm -hmm. Imagine if somebody told that to us here in the United States where we're at 5%. Yeah, no go. Um, but how do you see that being improved? I mean, what are the policy recommendations you would have for Spain uh, to improve that employment situation specifically? Well, I think they just have to reverse course. They have to have some kind of stimulus. And they can even pay for it. They can, you know, their uh, revenue as a percentage of the economy, tax revenue is very low compared to the rest of Europe. But if you look at the... Uh, I was just reading up on this. There's 50, something like a 52% income tax uh, on the average Spaniard. The, the taxpayers have the highest tax burden in 20, um, last year than they've had uh, since 1995 when they even started keeping records. So, well, I, I, I'm just looking at the comparison between how much tax revenue as a percent of the economy is collected in Spain as compared with other countries. And so, so it's, you're saying they're not taking in enough revenue low. via taxes. That's right. They're not. And so that's one thing you would change. And well, they, they, I mean, the most important thing is not to collect the taxes because that would just slow the economy if you did nothing else. The important thing is to create jobs through public investment, investment in education, uh, a stimulus program like they had originally in 2009 when mm -hmm. the recession hit. And they have to have active government policies to move the economy towards full employment. Because otherwise, uh, there's really they're telling young people that there's really no future in Spain. Because you, you've written this report that says austerity didn't work. It's not why Spain's economy has marginally improved. Yes. Well, that was what Rajoy ran on. He said, you don't want to switch horses in midstream here. We're finally right. recovering. He's taking credit. Yeah, he's taking credit that the economy is going to grow 3.1% this year. And you see a lot of hype in the, in the press about how great this is. But really, uh, this has nothing to do with austerity. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. What happened is the government let up on the austerity uh, in the last year or so. And so the economy started to recover. And also there were, equally importantly, there were a whole bunch of positive external factors, the falling uh, oil prices, mm -hmm. the European central banks, uh, quantitative easing, which uh, lowered interest rates. So this is what put, is, is giving them some respite, but it's not going to be enough, as, even, as I said, even the IMF acknowledges. It won't take them to reasonable levels of employment. They really have to change course. You also allude to the fact that there are changing outside factors. You mentioned oil prices that have been you know, much, much lower. Order of, of what they've been uh, per barrel, for example. And also, of course, we just last week had the Federal Reserve uh, in, uh, raising interest rates, which can put downward pressure on the euro. How do you see some of those things impacting what Spain is trying to accomplish? Yes, that was the other thing. I mean, the falling euro helps them as well because they can't devalue the euro themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the theory under which the European authorities have been pressuring this economy and forcing up unemployment for these years. The idea is really to deliberately raise unemployment and create a recession so as to lower wages and prices. That's literally what they've been doing for years now. So you think there's a wave that's going to spread through Europe of anti-austerity sentiment that's going to take take effect in these elections? It's been spreading for years. I mean, the reason the Popular Party won in 2011 was because the uh, Socialist Party supported the austerity. Of course, it was a wrong vote because they just made it worse. They supported it even more. Mm -hmm. 
But the point is that, yeah, more than 20 governments have fallen in Europe because the Eurozone authorities have their policies completely wrong.